I will now talk about the uses of DFS for other tasks on graphs, and I will start with the task of finding strongly connected components. Okay, strongly connected components, which is a concept that applies to directed graphs. Okay, in, in undirected graphs, we talk about connected components. In directed graphs, we talk about strongly connected components. Both of them were defined when we talked about graphs in component 82. But as a reminder, if I give you a directed graph, then a maximal subset of nodes, a maximal subset of nodes in that graph, such that there is a path from every node to every other node in that subset, is called, called a strongly connected component. Okay? Let us actually illustrate it easily with, with some graph here. So suppose I have a B, C, and D. And let's the, let the edges be like this, A to B, we have B to C, and we have C to A. So if you look at this graph here, I'm asking, can you find me maximal, maximal, which means that sets of nodes, you cannot add anything to them, maximal sets of nodes, such that there is a path between every pair of nodes in that set. Now, if you think about, let's say, suppose you say, okay, A, B. AB is not a maximal set of nodes such that there is a path between every two nodes. Because if you look at AB by themselves, there is an edge from a path from A to B. If we think about C, it's also we have a path from B to A. But that's not maximal because ABC is a set that contains AB and has a path between every two nodes there. There is a path from A to C, from A to B, from B to C, B to A from C to A, C to B. If we add D, it becomes a problem. A, B, C, D is not a, con a strongly connected component because there are there is a path from A to D, there is a path from B to D, there is a path from C to D. However, there is no path from D to A or to B or to C. So if you think about this, one strongly connected component is the set A, B, C, and the other strongly connected component is the set that contains d by itself <clears throat> okay so this this graph has two strongly connected components now how do we find strongly connected components and i am not going to be proving the correctness of the algorithm but i will be presenting the algorithm itself and the algorithm is simple proving it of course you need to think about why it works i will give the intuition why it should work if you look at strongly connected component, if you look at a strongly connected component, let's say ABC, one of the one of the properties that you will see there is that there is an, an a path from A to to every other node, from every other node to to A. Now, why is there no? Uh, why is D not part of of this strongly connected component? There is a path from each one of the nodes A, B, C to D. There is no path from D to C. So if you think about it, that if two nodes are in a strongly connected component, if two nodes are in a strongly connected component, let's say U and V are in a strongly connected component, one of the things that you will notice is that there is a path from U to V in there is a path, a path U to V, as well as a path V to U, okay? In other words, <clears throat> if U and V are not in an SCC, there could be a path either there is no path from U to V or there is no path from V to U, okay? So this is basically the idea for, for finding uh, strongly connected components. And uh, in the sense that, you know, imagine the graph has, you know, here's a strongly connected component. So strongly connected component means that I, I can follow a cycle, go from one node and follow a cycle and it will take me back to the same node. But now there could be edges coming from here to some other connect, strongly connected component. The issue is that there will be no edge coming back, otherwise they will be part of the strongly connected component. So the way the algorithm will work is, let's run DFS from a node, 
and find all the nodes that it, that are reachable from it. Okay, so if I take a node U here, I say, let me find all the nodes that are reachable from U. So I will find everything actually on this graph in this case, because everything is re seems to be reachable from U. But now how do I know that this component and this component should be separated because there's no path from them back to you? Now, think about, about looking at the graph in a reversed order and think about, can I go from a node somewhere here back to you? The answer is no. And this is exactly the idea of the algorithm for finding strongly connected component. We run DFS in two, twice, once on the graph itself once on the reverse of the graph and look at certain properties of that. Okay, so the way the algorithm will work for finding strongly connected components, so compute, let's say compute strongly connected components of G, the way it will work is step one, it will perform DFS on G and and we will we from this we will have the the finish time of every node right we will have because it gives us the discovery time it will give us the finish time of all the nodes here two we will construct the reverse of the graph okay so we call this g r which is the same the graph on the same set of nodes but with the edges reversed every edge from u to v we put it back from v to u okay and three is we run dfs you know we run dfs on this reverse graph but not arbitrarily starting the search from the highest numbered node okay starting from the node with the highest finish time. Okay, it works as exactly the way we did DFS here, but instead of saying start from an arbitrary node in step three, no, start from the node that has the high, the highest uh, finish time. Okay, and now, now if the if DFS does not reach all the nodes, start the next DFS, of course, from the highest number, from the highest finish uh, node, okay? Because remember that if, if the graph is not all reachable, you know, we need to run DFS multiple times from different starting nodes, but every time when you wanna run it, start it from the highest uh, finish time, okay? Now, the, the, uh, the, the last point is that each tree in the forest, in the resulting forest, the resulting forest is a, is a strongly connected component, okay? Of G, of the original G. So let's go back to our, let's go back to our graph that I drew before, I believe it was A, B, C, D. And we had from A to B, B to C, C to D. And we had from A to D, and we had from C to A. I believe this was the graph. So we first wanna run DFS on this, on this graph. And I remind you that the way DFS is going to run and label the nodes is that it's gonna say, visit node one first, then you go to B, then you go from B you go to C. From C, of course, you can go to A, but A is visited. We don't do that. We go to D. So D is visited as in time stamp four. In terms of finish time, D has no neighbors. So D is finished. I go back to C. C is finished. All the neighbors have been visited. It's six. Uh, I go back to B. All the neighbors have been visited. It's finished at uh, time seven. I go back to A. All the neighbors have been dealt with, visited. It's finished time is eight. So if you look at this, a has the highest finish time, followed by B, followed by C, followed by D. So this is the first, the, the first step of the algorithm. Okay, this is the first step. In the second step, we said, let's build the reverse of this graph. So we have A, B, C, and D, but let's reverse all the edges here. Okay, so it becomes like this. This is the reverse. 
but uh, just rem remember that in terms of finish time, this was finished last, this was finished second before last, and then six and five. Okay, so A and B, then C and D. And we said the third algorithm, the third step of the algorithm is let's perform a DFS on this GR. So this is GR here. Let's perform DFS on GR, starting the search from the highest numbered ver uh, node according to this finish time. Okay, so we need to start from, from A, okay? So if we start from A here, what, what happens? If we start uh, from, yes, from A, let me actually label it here. So we start from A here, this is the first one. And from A, I wanna do DFS, I go to C, right? So this is the, and from C, I can go to B now, and I visit B. This is what I can do now. Uh, I am done with this now, right? Because the neighbor of B is A and it's been visited. So this is part. So this is one of the trees in the forest. A goes to C and goes to B. This is a tree in the forest. Then after that, I go to node D and do DFS on it. If I do DFS on it, notice that I will not be using any of the two edges because both C and A have been have been visited. In fact, D will have this cross edge to A and it will have a cross edge to C. Okay, these are cross edges. And, uh, and we have, if I want to look at the back edges, of course, we had the back edge from B to A. So if you look at the fourth step in the algorithm, say that every tree in the, in the, DFS forest on GR is a, a strongly connected component. Now, if you look at this, this was one tree, and this is one tree, and these are the strongly connected components. So this is how the algorithm works. Step one, run DFS. Step two, compute the, the reverse of the graph, which is simple. Step three, run DFS now on the reverse of the graph, but starting from the node with the highest finish time. And uh, step four, just say declare that the nodes in every tree in the resulting forest are a strongly connected component. What is the running time of this algorithm? The first step we need to run DFS, it's O of M. Okay, let me assume M is greater than N. Let me drop the N here, O of M. If I wanna compute the reverse, it's O of M because I need to go through every edge and reverse it. I wanna run DFS again, it's O of M. And then the result is just I spit out the trees. It's O of M as well. So this is an O of M algorithm for computing the strongly connected components of a graph, okay? Now, you should be able to prove that this is correct, but remember that really the intuition behind this algorithm is that if you give me two nodes U and V and they are in the same strongly connected component, there should be a path in G from U to V and from V to U and this is where reversing the graph should work because if U and V are not in the, in the strong in a strongly connected component and there is a path only from U to V, but not from V to U, then we are not gonna be able to find that, okay? So this is the algorithm for, for finding strongly connected components using DFS as the, as the foundational piece or the, as the corner piece of the algorithm, and we get it in O of M running time.